Recipes for Technical Trading Success in Cook's Kitchen. Time to take a look at my favorite cybersecurity stocks. They're, of course, in the news and rallying on the uh, escalation of issues with Iran. And Iran is infamous for their hackers and ability to commit uh, cyber warfare, which is only going to be a constant theme in this decade. All right, so let's take a look at a few stocks. First up, uh, FireEye got upgraded. You can see my screen here. Got upgraded by, um, I believe it was uh, SunTrust. Uh, I'll verify that in a minute. Uh, and that, that was the big pop you saw here this week. But, but a lot of the cyber stocks have. Yeah, I wish I'd been in cyber. I'm, you know, who knows? It's pulling back today, and I'm not sure why. We traded this um, back in 2017 and 2018, made some money on it. Um, might take a look at it again. Uh, let's take a look at cyber. Cyber Arc, another name that I traded a couple years ago. Missed the big run above 100 and certainly missed the big move this week. Um, uh, CyberArk is another one to take a look at. Um, I forgot their specialty, to be honest, though. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to give you the specialty of my favorite uh, cybersecurity stock, which uh, we've been buyers of last week. Um, but it's good. They all, they all have a certain niche. And, um, you know, like you, you've heard of some of the new uh, entrants like uh, Okta, and Zscaler, Okta specializes in uh, identity security, so they they uh, they validate the person uh, trying to enter a network, and and maybe with biometrics or something in their credentials. Um, so let's take a look at what I have been buying. Uh, I did buy Proofpoint because I like their model, but I just sold Proofpoint because uh, estimates were starting to come down. And we made uh, you know a little over five percent on it. I, I like buying it in the in the in the one teens, proof point PFPT, um, uh, and the, they've got a, a strong security model too. And they've got you know a lot of customers in the Fortune 100, uh, but estimates are, are, are coming down. And the valuation is good uh, at maybe um, you know six and a half times sales. Now I'm going to show you a more expensive stock, which I like better, and that's CrowdStrike. So we, brought, we bought CrowdStrike actually on January 30th before all this stuff heated up. So I'll show you uh, where we're buying CrowdStrike. Yeah, let's go to the chart first. The Crowder. C-R-W-D. So I started nibbling on CrowdStrike at uh, under 50 bucks on January 30th just because I thought it was well oversold. You had, a, you had a really good confluence of events. Remember, this thing just IPO'd last year. So um, let's, let's take a look at the chart again, and I want to show you a few things. So you see this, uh, this big volume day here on December 9th? That was exactly 180 days since the IPO. So you know, there's your, your insiders getting out. After, after the run to 100 bucks um, this summer, crowd comes all the way down to 45. And so on December 9th, after the lockup expiration, some insiders were happy to get out. Uh, over 15 million shares traded there. But I said, you know what? Uh, I think this thing has some good things happening. And they specialize in uh, endpoint protection, which um, not being a programmer myself, that's sort of hard to explain, but I'm going to give you a great example. The Mercedes-AMG Formula One racing team uses CrowdStrike, and they did sort of a commercial for them. You can find it on their website. Um, but this, this Formula One team, you know, they got to have the sensors on the, on the cars. Every time they're running the car, testing something new, they've got thousands of sensors giving them millions of data points uh, every time they test the car. So... And, and what the Formula One team from, uh, uh, from Mercedes-AMG says is uh, we were doing, you know, we were IoT before anybody even was talking about IoT. And that, that's exactly right. So they need security. That's proprietary information uh, flooding into their databases, and they need to protect that uh, from 
other racing teams or anyone else, uh, f- you know, for their designs. So uh, back to my chart here. Um, we got real, you know, our, our timing was good to buy CrowdStrike at 50. I, you know, I didn't know it was going to race higher. And then we had the in- incidents with the RAN. Um, huge volume days here. This, uh, so looking at Friday, Friday was like 21 million shares, and uh, or that was Monday rather, and um, uh, and then the very next day, a um, an inside another insider comes to sell. Uh, turns out Credit Suisse has a client who wants to sell five million shares, and the market just soaked up those shares right away. It was you know we had another huge volume day on Tuesday. Um, and sitting here, you know, holding 55. So I like CrowdStrike to go, go higher. Um, let me see if I can find on my commentary here. For some reason, I don't have my January. The, uh, the Oh, here it is. Here we go. Ah, I can't find what I'm looking for. That's all right. The point is, is that... Uh, CrowdStrike has a lot of good customers. Um, they have Goldman as a customer, and and you know now there's a there's a new title in the C-suite. It's uh, uh, CISO, Chief Information Security Officer, and their guy uh, at Goldman, who uses CrowdStrike, came from the government. So this is another angle on CrowdStrike, and why I like it is that they're already plugged in to the uh, uh, the federal government programs like uh, GovRAMP, FedRAMP, whatever it is, and providing security uh, for government networks and endpoints. Um, this and this guy was with uh, I think he was with DoD, and then um, the last administration uh, ran security. So for for him to be a Goldman and then bring on CrowdStrike, I thought was pretty impressive, and you know so that's the type of clientele they have. They also have um, at least 75% of the Fortune 100. All right, so back to the chart here. What do I see for upside? So, I mean, you know, this thing is, we've got the higher lows. You've got the big volume accumulation here. So um, I thought we had a gap to fill. Uh, we don't have we don't have any significant earnings gap to fill. It's not like uh, you know the stock cratered. It was just a, it was just a valuation thing. It was trading over ten times sales. So this thing is gonna, it's gonna have to tackle some resistance at sixty, and then sixty five. Uh, but I think you can buy it here near fifty five, and and hang on to it. And while you look at the other cybersecurity stocks, that that's the thing. You know whether I talk about the data mining stocks. Or payments, you know, I like Square, I like Alteryx. Um, uh, you know, you you pick a player, you pick a pony rather, and then you look at the other ponies too, and and kick the tires, learn what their business model is, what their competitive advantage is, and you know, the, the thing is, is the valuations sometimes almost don't matter. You know, like I said, I uh, proof point is the better value at you know. Uh, mid single mid single digits to sales, but um, you know CrowdStrike has the has the win at their back right now. So while you own one, take a look at three or four others and then position properly. Obviously, CyberArk has been the one to own for quite a while here, and I would look for a chance to get back in FireEye, say near you know between sixteen and seventeen. All right, that's my quick cyber wrap. Talk to you soon.